Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this service of morning prayer. Some of you uh, will have noticed uh, that we've been using this type of former service for some time, certainly since we've reopened in physical format. Uh, and you might be wondering um, why it's slightly different to what we had gone before. It's actually the morning prayer for Sunday. And it's from the revised prayer book in blue. And this, we're using the seasonal variation for Epiphany. Um, it was actually originally intended that the morning prayer we had been using uh, was for the days of the week, not specifically for Sunday. And you'll remember that there is the original format, morning prayer one, morning prayer two. They haven't called this morning prayer three, they've called it morning prayer for Sunday. But any of you who are familiar with computers will know why, because the abbreviation is MP3. But I just thought you mightn't be aware of where this format of service came from. Other things in terms of notices is that we, uh, as clergy, are meeting with the bishop online during the week uh, about COVID and all the restrictions. Uh, and the COVID team, certainly for this parish, will be meeting after the Bible group on Wednesdays. We review the measures that we have in place. Um, and a reminder that we do this in the light of the command, love your God, but more especially the second half, love your neighbors yourself. The reason why we've moved things around and wearing masks and keeping our distances is to keep others, particularly the vulnerable, safe and well. So I ask for your patience and forbearance as we continue to move forward, but most especially your prayers that we are actually moving out of this pandemic and into better times. As I said, welcome to this service of morning prayer on the 6th of February, during the season of Epiphany. And as we have done over these many weeks, the theme of the service is based on the Bible passages and what the Lord, I believe, is saying to us through his word. Uh, and we are looking and reflecting today on not just who we worship, but whom we worship. Uh, and the words there on the right hand side, blessed are the eyes because they see, and blessed are the ears from, for they, because they hear from Matthew's gospel. And hopefully that picture will make more sense as we reflect and come together in prayer. So as always, the parts we say together are in yellow type, and my parts are in green or in white. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to be praised and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As we do each Sunday, we return to God's will and to God's ways, recognizing that we're not always walked in his will and ways. And we prevail upon God's mercy, his grace, his unmerited, our, his unmerited favor upon us. The grace of God is drawn upon us, drawn upon the world our, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. We say together, O God, our loving heavenly Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you and we have often been selfish. We have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Your word is a lantern unto my feet, a light upon my path. O oh Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine in our hearts. 
we come to our first readings today, the Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Amen. And we read it together. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you. O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. That is great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purposes for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Amen. We come to our hymns this morning. Please stand.
be seated for our reading from the book of Corinthians. Thank you. The first reading is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Kephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom who are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 1. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and they were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds in the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let you down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you will say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that had been taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now you will go, for now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayer for this Sunday. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of our frailty, of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I pray, Lord, that you would indeed open our eyes, our ears and our very hearts to acknowledge you as Lord and come to renew realization, faith and sharing of you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. So as I said earlier in the service, the question, whom do we worship? And I've chosen some words from Matthew's gospel, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear, because that comes to the heart of what both the Luke's gospel and the Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. And hopefully then that picture on the right will make more sense as we go on. So Jesus would then later go on to ask Peter and the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Jesus warns them not to be following the ways of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who 
find the words and ways of Jesus a challenge to their traditions and their practices. And Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? And they reply, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And what they're saying is what many people are thinking. They recognize this Jesus is something different, something special, but they haven't realized, they haven't re dawned on them. They haven't had that epiphany necessarily of who Jesus is. But Jesus said to, to Simon, who do you say that I am? And Simon says to Jesus, you're the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says back to Simon, blessed are you, Simon, son of Judah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the will of my father. I know this is seen some time later after our scene from Luke's gospel, but it echoes what we see here in by the shoreline. So do you like the little boat I put up on the screen, the pulpit? And actually the front, I discovered this when I was preparing for this sermon, this passage a year or two ago. The very front of a boat is called its pulpit. And that's where we get the name pulpit from. And there are some churches whose pulpit is in the name or in the shape, the shape of a boat. And it echoes this little scene we see in the lake in Gennesaret. So not surprisingly, Jesus has been crushed by the people coming to hear his teaching about God's kingdom and God's ways. And being practical, Jesus gets into a boat, pushes it back away from the shore. There's probably a little hill rising up from the shore so Jesus can speak into the crowd who are listening to him. And he teaches them about the nature of God. And we're gonna move back and forth between Luke's gospel and the letter to, in, to the church in Corinth. We jump now to the letter in church of Corinth and just look at the uh, context. And Paul is telling us the good news of not just important news, but a first news that is proclaimed by Paul. And essentially what he is speaking about is that the difference between himself as an apostle and the other apostles who are with Jesus, blessed are the eyes that have seen and the ears that have heard. And Paul reminds us and reminds the people in the church here and the people in the church that is many years ago in Corinth, that Jesus Christ died for our sins in accordance with scriptures. He didn't just die because they say he felt like it or was that was just what happened. It was intended by God and made known to us through the scriptures. He was buried and died for our sins and he was raised on the third day. So this is a reminder, a challenge that sin doesn't have a hold over God and over Jesus because he was raised and as he is the firstborn from the dead, as the Bible puts it, we too can have faith in eternal life. And then Paul goes on to say he appeared to Caiaphas. I put that little note in there to Peter and the twelve. And he goes on to say he appeared to James, and the apostles. And last of all, untimely born, he appeared to Paul. And you might say, well, why is he saying untimely born? Well, Paul goes on to answer that question. He says, I'm the least of apostles unfit to be called apostle because I persecuted the church of God. I wonder, do you realize what the word apostle means? It essentially means a witness of Jesus, that he is the Christ. And obviously Peter and others were at the tomb and they came to see him later and they came to meet him and be with him those many year, three years leading up to the cross. But Paul is in a different category, a different place. And he's particularly helpful, I think, for us today. For two reasons, he teaches the ways of God and the scriptures, the Bible, both up to and beyond the Old, the Old Testament. To us Gentiles, we're not Jews by tradition or by birth or by practice, we are Gentiles. And yet he teaches us the very ways of God and the words of God. The other thing that Paul came to a divine revelation of Jesus. Now him, it was very spectacular. You know, he was on the road to Damascus about to persecute the church again. And Jesus appeared to him in a vision and saying, why are you persecuting me, Paul? But he wasn't one of the 12 or others who were with Jesus for those three years and saw him at the risen at the tomb. We weren't with Jesus and we weren't at the tomb. Yet I pray that we might have a revelation, not necessarily as spectacular as Paul, 
but that penny would drop, that moment of light. The church is a word for it, epiphany, which is why we're in the season of epiphany. We realize who this Jesus is. And Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. May we echo those words. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Not just that we understand who Jesus is, but we come to believe who Jesus is. Now let's jump back to the passage in Luke. And here we have Simon and they were washing their nets. They've done their fishing such as it was. They've caught next to nothing. And Simon has let Jesus use his boat to teach. And Jesus says to Simon, now push out. I want you to go and catch some fish. And most of you here are from either familiar with farming stock. Can you imagine if somebody came from an office in Dublin and tried to teach you how to do farming? You wouldn't be too impressed, would you? You wouldn't think they'd know what they're doing. I can imagine the same attitude might have been in Simon Peter's mind. Who is this carpenter trying to tell me how to fish? But it seems he was brought up to be a polite man. So he says, Master, we've worked all night long. I'll do as you say. And we know what happens next. They catch not just a few fish, but so many fish. This boat's probably not much bigger than a rowing boat. They call together another boat and their friends. And even when they pull the fish into those two boats, they're nearly sinking. God doesn't do things by half measures. Jesus doesn't do things by half measures. He's showing to Simon Peter that even the fish are the ways, you know, he knows more than Simon can know. This astounds him, because how can this carpenter be able to do this? The other thing we perhaps don't realize is because it's so gray oftentimes here, that in that part of the world, you don't fish in daylight. The fish can see you coming because the bright light and in daylight, they go down to the bottom of the lake. Not so now. Jesus is able to bring up the fish from the bottom of the lake, if you will. So that's why Simon reacts the way he does. He recognizes this. He doesn't fully understand at this point, but he knows this Jesus is of God. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. By the grace of God, by he's seen this Jesus is something more than just a teacher or a leader. And later, much later, <clears throat> after Simon has been with Jesus and seen the miracles and heard the teaching, and I mentioned this to you earlier, Jesus asked him who he is, and he, G Simon Peter says, you are the Messiah, the awaited Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus replies to Simon, blessed are you, Simon, son of Judah, for that for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. God has willed it that Simon would actually come to realize in faith who Jesus is. And I pray too that we, by the grace of God, would realize, either in you or from, for the umpteenth time, who Jesus is. Paul has done that. And in response to that, Paul says, I've worked harder than any of them. But he hasn't done it just to work hard. He's done it in response to the grace of God, and that so he proclaims, so that you may believe. That's why Paul has written the letters, why he endures persecution, he endures imprisonment. It's all so that you may come to believe that this Jesus is who he says he is, the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. So therefore, we've heard who this Jesus is in the reading in Luke, reading in Corinthians. It asks, therefore, Jesus is this, if you will, asking us the question, who do you say that I am? And I pray that by God's grace, we may acknowledge him as Lord. So I, if you will, hold the hand of faith of Paul and Peter, and I, by God's grace, in my feeble attempts, attempt to share what it is that Jesus is. And people, even to this day, acknowledge Jesus as special. They call him a wise teacher. They call him holy and enlightened leader great for leadership skills, a prophet, a holy man. But Jesus is so much more than that. Indeed, he is God's son, the Messiah, sent to bring us back to God, break the barrier of the sin that we put between us and God, and that I have come to believe in the line of Peter and Paul, and I pray you also may come to believe, that you would indeed have eyes to see, ears to hear, 
but most especially voices to respond that Jesus is Lord. And that's why that picture is there on the right hand side. The resurrection makes all the difference. It, it's a demonstration, if you will, of who Jesus is, the Son of God, and that through him we can have faith and life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. So as part of our response, part of our yes to Jesus, each week we have a statement of faith, usually the creed, and this week we have the Apostles' Creed. Can you please stand as we declare together our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for standing. Now please be seated for prayer. Let us pray to God who welcomes all in love. Let us lift our hearts and faith to the one who hears our prayers and holds close to himself all those in need. So let us pray in faith for the growth of the church, the concerns of the world, and the needs of our brothers and sisters. Gracious God, within this time of worship, we pray that you would reveal yourself to us. Speak to us as we celebrate the life of your church as a community of believers. As we worship you today, strengthen our faith and challenge us to live out what we believe. Fill us with your grace to be active members, individually and together, to make Christ known. Fill us with your grace so that we may be visible witnesses. Help us to recognize our responsibility to encourage and uphold one another and to live together in peace and love. Heavenly Father, sustain those whom you have called as your ordained fishers of men in Christ's church. Give them the courage to live out their commitment to teach the true values of the gospel. May you be gracious to them, and may they not become discouraged when they see little fruit for their labors. Today, in the worldwide cycle of prayer, we pray in particular for the Church of Ireland. The Most Reverend John MacDowell, Archbishop of Armagh and Primate of all Ireland, and the Most Reverend Dr. Michael Jackson, Archbishop of Dublin, for all bishops and clergy who faithfully serve you within the Church of Ireland. We pray for Bishop Andrew. May he receive your guidance as he tends to the spiritual and practical needs of this diocese. We especially remember in our prayers today the congregation of Fahanvale Parish, Eglinton, and Reverend Canon Paul Hoy, their rector. We pray for Reverend Adam. May he be filled with your Holy Spirit and seek your guidance in the decisions he needs to make. Grant him sufficient grace and godly wisdom to faithfully serve the people of these parishes and the local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word of truth. Thank you that you sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, and that his resurrected life has been imparted to all who believe and place their trust in him. Lord, we pray for the congregation of all the churches in the Finn Valley area and for our own group of parishes. May we be ready and willing to share the gospel message with whosoever we come in contact with today and every day. Lord, help us when we are downcast because we are not seeing results from our efforts but to keep going and to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Help us to leave the outcomes with you and to depend on your unfailing faithfulness. 
Open our eyes to see and know that you are here among us. Open our ears to recognize your speaking voice as you send us out to live and work in this world as your faithful disciples. Father God, we pray that in whatever role we serve as your people, grant that we may be a holy church, a praying church, a giving church, and a serving church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the world and the places where we live. Help us to be mindful that we are all created equally in your sight, but despite this, there is still so much inequality to be found. Help us to remember that you want us to be good stewards of your creation, living responsibly to ensure that future growth is sustainable and that all abundance is fairly sh shared for the good of all. Spirit of healing and hope, we remember before you the many countries and individuals experiencing ongoing conflict and violence throughout the world, especially in the Middle East and in many countries of Africa. We continue to pray for a successful result from the diplomatic discussions aiming to defuse the threat of a Russian invasion of the Ukraine. We pray for God's peace and reconciliation will overcome all hatred, conflict and war. Merciful God, we bring before you those suffering from widespread drought or severe flooding, overcrowding and inadequate accommodation in refugees camp, those denied of proper education, and those who struggle for freedom. We give you thanks for all that has been done in Syria, Yemen, and Afghanistan, and other places in the world to relieve the effects of human suffering resulting from human humanitarian crises. We join our prayers with those of desperate people everywhere, trusting in your gifts of courage and, resil and resilience as we struggle with these challenges. Lord, we cry out for an adequate response throughout the world that will bring swift action to give hope for a better future. Help us to use our influence within our families and communities to bring peace and joy into people's lives instead of strife, stirring up strife. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you created us and set us in a relationship with each other, in our families, our neighborhoods and communities. We give you thanks for the richness of home life and community interaction, which brings meaning and encouragement to our lives. Where people are divided and bitterness has turned into resentment, show us how to work for, for reconciliation. Inspire our leaders at every level of local life to work together for the care of the most vulnerable and to restore the goodness and well-being of our lives as we recover from the effects of the last two years of the pandemic. Help us to be generous citizens, to be kind, thoughtful and loving to one another and in believing that you alone are the source of all life's provisions, we pray that lives would be transformed into ones of self-respect and sufficiency through effective uses of your resources, and that communities would be transformed into ones of resilience and prosperity through trust and cooperation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, we pray for all who need healing in their lives and give you thanks where healing has taken place. We bring to you those whose lives are darkened by loneliness, fear or weariness. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence. Lord, come to the aid of those carrying the burden of chronic pain and illness, short or long-term effects of COVID-19, those waiting on an operation or delayed treatment, those coming to terms with a life-changing diagnosis, those for whom life is a daily struggle due to mental health problems or terminal illness. Lord, we pray that you will give them the understanding that you are bearing these burdens with them and always working towards their healing and wholeness. 
We pray for the elderly, the housebound, and for all who selfishly care, selflessly care for them. We give our thanks and praise that you, Lord, are mighty in strength, and you fully understand the frailties and fears that we face in our daily lives. In a moment of silent prayer, we have an opportunity now to bring before God those personally known to us who are unwell at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has been raised from death, and you have promised your resurrected life to all who have become your sons and daughters. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith of Christ and in the assurance of the resurrection. Loving God, we ask that you would be present with all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, whether recent or in the past, that they will find comfort through the support of family and friends. Lord, surround them with your loving presence and hold them with your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, help us in the coming week to prayerfully consider how you poured out your love for us through Jesus Christ who give up everything for us on the cross, that by placing our faith in Jesus, we are rescued, redeemed, given new life, and the assurance of eternal life through Christ's resurrection, because we belong to him. This and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Elsie. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we say this prayer together. Father, use us unworthy as we are, Bring your kingdom of mercy, justice, love, and peace. Empower us by your spirit and unite us in your son, that all our joy and delight may be to serve you now and forever. Amen. Please stand for our final hymn. I know it's an Easter hymn, but it echoes the words that Paul had in the letter to Corinthians.
as we draw towards a close. Be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives as well as our worship be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son, be manifested to you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We say together, we go into the world to walk in God's light, to reflect God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Thank you.